Alright, so we've done a lot of different things with inverses, but we actually are sometimes going to have to figure out the inverse of a function just given the equation. So we need to look at that also. Now think about what we've talked about about inverses so far. In an inverse function, the x and the y literally switch places. So isn't it true that this function, I could write that as y equals 4 over x plus 2. I could just replace the f of x with y. Now think about that. In an fu inverse function, the x and the y's literally switch places. So to do that, I would replace the y with x, and I would replace the x with y. This is the inverse function but it's not in the proper form. In order for it to be in the proper form, we really need to have y alone. So in order to get y alone, I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 2 so that the y plus 2 will cancel in the denominator and I don't have to worry about that anymore. Over here on the left, though, I'm going to have to distribute this x. So this will be xy plus 2x equals 4. Now remember, I'm solving for y, so I'm going to move this 2x term over. So that'll be xy equals 4 minus 2x. And then still getting y alone, I'm going to divide everything by x. So y will equal 4 minus 2x over x. This is the inverse function. Now we don't want to write it as y because that's the same as this. It makes it seem like those are the same function but they're really not. We need to make some distinction here. So we need to rewrite it as the inverse function is 4 minus 2x over x. There is our inverse function. Now this problem is also asking us to state the domain and the range of both the original and the inverse. So let's look at our original and our inverse functions. We're going to talk about the domain and the range of both of those. Okay, our original function, we've done these before. This is a rational function, so we would set the denominator equal to zero and solve for the whole. So this would be the set of all x's such that x cannot equal a negative 2. That would cause a zero denominator. For our inverse function, here again, this is a rational one, so we would set the denominator equal to zero. So our domain here would be the set of all x's such that x cannot equal zero. Now for the ranges, we could look at the horizontal asymptotes, which we have done before, but if you use the idea of inverses, finding the ranges are very, very easy. Think about, we literally switched out the x and the y places. So the domain, or the x values here, become the y values in the inverse function. So our range for the inverse will be the set of all y's such that y cannot equal negative 2. For the inverse function, those x values become the y's in the regular function. So this would be the set of all y's such that y cannot equal 0. And if you go back and look at the horizontal asymptotes, you'll see that those match up also.